two, almost there. And one, be there now. Tell me the first things that you see, you sense, you experience. It looks otherworldly. Uh, it looks like I'm standing in front of a, a castle, but it doesn't look like anything from Earth. Mm. It, um, the sky is really interesting. It, it doesn't look like the sky on Earth. It, it's blue, but you can see very clearly other, um, looks like planets, um, multiple moons and suns. It's really interesting. And this place is special. This is where the different galactic beings and races come to meet, to discuss events happening throughout the universe. Wonderful. And so you said this looks like, this place looks like a castle. How does it yes. look? It's, it's holographic. It doesn't, it's, it's not physical, but okay. it looks physical. Mm-hmm. And when I look down at my body, my body is holographic as well. Nice. Do you All feel male the, or female in this body? I feel female. I feel like myself. Okay. But I'm but they've allowed me a, f- a version of me to come to the space. Beautiful. Tell me what happens next. Where do you go? I'm walking over a moat. <laughs> <laughs> I've I I'm hearing uh you should feel honored this is invitation only it feels like they're right. teasing me <laughs> <laughs> so tell me where you go after you cross over this mode I'm in this what looks like a castle and there are I think I can see 10 Mm -hmm. I think there's 10 there may be more I'm hearing 12 but I only can see 10 people sitting around a table and as you look at these different people tell me what they look like do they look like us or do they look different they all we all look the same we all look like uh i think th- they're telling me we're doing this for you to uh, because it'll be easier for you if we all look the same so they're taking on my form Okay, so it so looks nice like you guys. it looks like ten of you sitting around the table. <laughs> Not me, but ten, ten, ten okay. human looking, <laughs> ten human looking uh, holographic <laughs> people. If that makes okay, any I sense, I thought that would be whatever. really interesting if there were ten of you. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> thank God. <laughs> it seems Wonderful. very. They seem very. Um, I think like they're having fun. Um, yeah, <laughs> making fun of me. <laughs> I just heard one person, it sounds British, but they said, yeah, yeah, we're having fun taking a piss. <laughs> Wonderful. Thanks, and so all of these beings, are they all of the same race or is it different races represented here? No, multiple 
races are represented here because this is an auspicious time and we are going to let our Pleiadian brothers and sisters take the lead. However, everyone felt that it was important to be present during this most important transmission of information today. Very good. And would the other beings who are here with us today, would it be okay if we know who's represented here with us? We refer to ourselves as the Council of Twelve. We represent the various benevolent beings throughout the universe that like to and are and that like to share this information with those of you on earth at this time. Very good. Thank you so much for being here with us today. I am going to turn this over to the Pleiadians and just allow them to bring forward the information they'd like to share. Dearest Heather, thank you very much for all of your hard work today. We know it wasn't easy to get to this place. Thank you. We feel it is very important for us to share this information with you today. At this point, we're not sure if you should even make it public, but we will decide as we continue with our conversation today. Okay. Yes. The world that you live in is in a very difficult place. So much is happening. There is a lot of confusion. There is a lot of false information being spread about. And we're here to set the record straight. Thank you. We feel it is our duty to do this. We owe it to humanity. What would you like to share with us today? I feel like I'm getting in the way here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm. You're doing great. Amazing. And just use the breath. Just when you feel that, just use the breath and allow yourself just to relax even more. And just trust that flow of information as it comes in. We will start off slow to let this vessel get acclimated to our vibration mm -hmm. and to prepare herself for the information that is about to come forth. Thank you. Does she need a little bit of time just to sit with your energy before we proceed? Would that be helpful? She feels if you keep talking, it will help. Okay. Very good. Very good. So I know earlier this week, I sat down to um, begin to bring forward some questions for this session today with Kim and was told that the Pleiadians wanted to come forward to bring through some important messages about things that are unfolding on our planet at this time um, and that they had much to share. Would you like to begin today? What is the most important thing that you'd like to start off and share with us today? What do we need to know? You were at the tipping point. This is the most important time in your reality. This is the time that is gonna determine the final outcome of everything that is going on that has been going on in the direction of your existence. We know this is alarming to hear and we are quite serious in the messages that we are bringing forth today. We do not want to frighten you, but we feel that we must be incredibly stern to let you know what needs to happen. Thank you. 
what do we need to know about this tipping point and where we are and what's happening? We realize we must go easy with this vessel. We can sense her fear. And we do not want to frighten her, but we feel that she is the only one at this point who can bring this information in. She's been around for a long time and she has experienced these shifts and these experiences her entire existence. So that is why we feel it is important that she bring these messages through because it will be familiar. We are relying upon her to recall all her soul has experienced, every battle she has ever fought in the past. This is the ultimate battle for her which is why she's struggling with bringing the information in is it because of what she's experienced in the past that's holding her back or what she's fearful we're going to experience moving forward fearful of what is to come What can you share with us maybe to start off in not such an overwhelming way? What positive things can you share with us? Maybe we can start there and then work our way into some of this other information. We would like to reassure you that the outcome is most certainly a positive outcome, but it's going to be a long road and a difficult journey to get there. That is why we are all here today. We want you to know that you have the support of your galactic brothers and sisters. We have not abandoned you, nor will we abandon you. But you must understand, there's only so much we can do to help you. The best way we can help you is to give you messages like this and support you from where we are. We cannot physically come to our dimension and interfere. We are prohibited from doing so. We have tried and we have been unsuccessful in our efforts to make more of a physical presence in your realm. Those of us who are present today all agree that we will do everything we can to assist you on your journeys going forward. Thank you for that. We're so grateful the assistance and the guidance. We are letting this vessel know the reason why she just asked us why she's here, why her, and she's very much a part of our council. What can you tell her about that? that she has chosen to incarnate on earth repeatedly for centuries to do the work of this council in the physical. That is the only way we have any influence on the physical planes is when one of us chooses to incarnate. And we take turns, so sometimes she will remain here and one of us will go and incarnate. But she has taken it upon herself 
for centuries to be the one to keep incarnating on earth over and over and over again. She felt that she needed to familiarize herself with the energies, with the knowledge of the land, so that she could help and get to the point that she is right now. Our voice in the physical. Wonderful. And so that was the messages that we've been getting or that I received was that um, the guides want to be able to more fully integrate with her like they do with Emily. So will she be bringing through more of these information or more of these um, more information from the council? Is that part of her role moving forward? Yes. We will be working with her quite regularly going forward so that she can bring these messages forth with no effort at all. And so we were talking about we're at a tipping point. What do we need to know about that tipping point and where we are in this now moment? I'm not hearing anything. Mm -hmm. Do you still feel like you're at that council meeting? Um, I do. I just don't feel the energy as strong as I did. Mm -hmm. So let's just explore the space where you are, just bringing your intention back to this council meeting, allowing the energy to once again reintegrate. Tell me as you're in this space, what you see, what you sense, what you notice, what you feel. Everyone feels very um, powerful and calm and loving. Feels like Camelot. I know that sounds silly, but that's what it feels like. Mm. Almost like a round table, Knights of the Round Table feel. Did you get yes, into that? But, yes, and, and but that everybody has that, um, you know, the way Arthur was always depicted as the, you know, strong, kind warrior. That's how they all feel. Mm-hmm. Maybe they can shed some light because we were talking about the fact that in another session that we did together, they were talking about the Renaissance that we're going to be moving into. Dolores talks about the thousand years of peace. What can they share with us about that? You are on the precipice of the most beautiful time that your realm has ever experienced. But in order to experience such greatness, you also have to experience the exact opposite of that. And that is why we say you are at a tipping point because our beloved friends, things are going to look quite frightening for you coming up in the very near future and we want you to know that you must remain steadfast in your faith and your courage and your knowledge of what has come before you and what will what will come again you are going to see your fellow man suffering in some areas great suffering And there are those of you are going to be in some areas where that doesn't exist at all. And that's going to be very confusing for those of you who understand what's happening here is why is this happening in some areas and not in others? What can we do to help these people that are suffering so greatly? And we say to you, the best way that you can help those is to use your voice. Use your voices louder than you have ever used them before. 
you have the power to eradicate the evil that is enveloping your realm, your planet, your dimension with the power of your voices, but they must be in unison. You must do this together as one voice, one strong voice, something that has never been experienced in your area before. No one has had to do this anywhere throughout the universe. That is why you hear many people saying that the Earth show, they say it jokingly, is the greatest show in the universe. This is nothing to be making light of. This is the most serious moment in all of time and space. The only way for you to eradicate this is to do it together in unison. You have to use your voices. It is the power of your voice that is going to make this shift happen. It is imperative that you do it together. Tell us how we can use our voices. What is the best way to come together and to use our voices to help eradicate the darkness? We see that you have tried before in many different areas throughout your planet to come together. We use our words quite cautiously right now. But the only way for you to do this, we hesitate to use the word protest, but that is the only word that translates to what we are trying to express to you. If every single human on your planet that understands what is happening you have to do it together if it is if you are hand in hand stretched out across the continents in every city in every la- on every land if you do this together at the same time and we know this has been attempted before it wasn't enough not enough people had awoken you are almost to the tipping point of having the critical numbers that you need to make this happen but it has to be done in unison that is the only way to break the dark forces up for good and when we say this we mean that you will eradicate them once and for all they will no longer exist because the power of light the power of love the power of the human spirit is the only thing that can eradicate this evil so tell me more about when you say protest and having people stand up are we protesting in order to wake others up so that they hear our voices or are we protesting against those who are doing these terrible things around the globe you are protesting against the terrible things that are happening the only way to stop their future plans from happening is to stop ignoring it stop pretending like it's not going to happen because it will happen. Very good. You're doing okay. Mm-hmm. Energy's all right. You're doing mm-hmm. fantastic. Amazing. They're a, little intense. They're a little intense. Yeah. Let's just ask them to help with the energy a little bit more. It kind of builds up, doesn't it? Mm. When it comes through. Mm-hmm. They're showing me like what I see feel like they're taking a step back for a second (laughs) there what I see and um and I feel like they're choosing what they say very carefully Mm -hmm. um uh what I'm seeing is like this sea of people across every continent saying no we're not going to do this we're we're not going to take it anymore like screaming, like, yeah. like picketing, like Nuremberg 10.0, like that, what people are talking about is nothing co- in comparison to um, what they're showing me. It looks like, I don't even know. I, I know history and it makes the revolution look like a, a kitty program. So what about all scary. of 
all of these people who are unable to see all of the darkness. They're just living their lives. They just think that these things that are happening are just, they're just supposed to be that way. What about those people? How do we wake them up and get them on board with this protesting? They're going to wake up as soon as tragedy strikes for them. And we hate to bring this tragic news but unfortunately, those who have been resistant to the subtle messages that we have tried to bring to your planet have been ignored. And those people are the ones who are going to have to experience the worst of this for them to realize that they need to join their fellow man in the fight against evil, it's going to come. Some of them will not fully understand what's happening and it's going to come to that bitter end breaking point before they jump on board. And that's when you will have the numbers that you need to rein in your era of peace. And we want you to know that this when you accomplish this goal and trust us when we say you will, we have faith in you, our beloved brothers and sisters. We know that you can do this. That is why we are here. That is why we assemble as a council. That is why we keep discussing what we can do to help, how we can get this message to those of you on this planet who understand what's going on and to get the message out to others who are in a position of influence. Very good. So would it be appropriate to talk about some of these things that are happening around the world to bring more awareness to what it is that we need to stand up for? The law of man has been infiltrated. You must assemble the strongest team of legal minds to help you fight this. They are manipulating the law, especially sources, divine laws throughout the universe. This team is the only way for you to have your first breakthrough. And the first breakthrough is to assemble this team and you will have protection behind this team. This team is going to be able to interfere in their plans. They're showing me some. What they're showing me is that it it looks like they've taken all the different laws and, you know, like constitutions and uh, like governing bodies throughout the world and they've jumbled it to use it against you rather than to protect you. And that is why you have to start there to untangle their web of deceit. That is the only way to persevere through these chaotic times. So I'm sitting here thinking I wouldn't know the first place to even begin to look for these types of legal minds. Are there people already out there that have an awareness maybe that they will be coming together to do this work? Sort of like we come together to do these sessions. Yes. However, you must be cautious. Not every group has pure intent. Some of them have been infiltrated by the dark and they will lead you astray. You must use your discernment to sort through every bit of information that is coming your way. And the best way to do this is to once and for all see clearly what is truth and what is false and we will guide you 
every step of the way to help you clarify and know what is true and what is false. This may upset a lot of people at this time, but there is one rather large movement that is happening in your in your world that is absolutely false and they are doing that on purpose. Can you tell us what that movement is? They call themselves Q. It is absolutely false. It is it is the darkness trying to infiltrate the light community and they have done quite a successful job in leading people astray do not believe any legal person or anyone sharing this message so let's say that we do share this message that's coming through kim today how would people know that this message coming through today is accurate over those types of messages? How do we discern? How do we truly know who's bringing forward the truth and who's not? Because you have nothing to gain. This vessel has nothing to gain from sharing this this information we're bringing through today. There will be plenty who choose to dismiss what the messages that we are bringing to you today. And that is their choice. They, they must decide for themselves. Thank you. Be what? mindful and be cautious of those who seek to gain from sharing knowledge and sharing information and attempting to help if you are trying to gain from it in some way shape or form we tell you to use your discernment and stay away very good so i wanted to ask um there was another um there have been other sessions and other channels who have been talking about sort of this catastrophic or a major event, and it's already been spoken about um, once in today's session. Can you expand on if there is a major catastrophic event? There's something that we need to be aware of that is happening soon. What can you share? Yes. The evil forces that are in control have infiltrated every aspect of your lives. And we regret to inform you. Oh God, this is terrible. They are using their nefarious technology to execute people on a grand scale. And this is going to be catastrophic when your world is flooded with people of all ages that are dying tragically. So what comes to mind as we're talking about this is the recent earthquake in Turkey. Can you expand on that? Is that part of what you're referring to? That is one way that they like to execute people sorry they're showing me some stuff and it's okay pretty rough mm -hmm. just take a nice deep breath and take as much time as you need you are beginning to see them using their technology against you right now with tragedies weather tragedies and with perfectly healthy people dying with no explanation because they have poisoned a great many of you. All they have to do is activate their nefarious technology. You're doing great. I'm right here with you.
my God, it's so awful. What do you see? Can you describe that to me? Just as much detail as you want to, you're comfortable giving. It looks like a war, you know, like it looks like a battlefield and it, and it just looks like all they have to do is like push a button and everybody just collapses. And this is what they're going to do to take out large numbers of the population because they feel that if they take out as many people as they can, then there won't be enough to fight back. But the the more they do this, the more people will wake up. So this technology that they're using, I'm going to look through my questions here. We were talking about, Kim and I were talking about um, things being put in our food, in our water. Um, we know things were put in the jabs. Is that technology being activated through those sources or is this something completely different from that? This is something completely different than that. That was how they started their plan. That was the, that was the testing ground for how far they could really take it. And while there is still danger in these things, those are weak compared to what they have in store. The next phase of their evil plan. It's going to affect mostly people who live in large urban areas because they can have they can harm more people uh, in a smaller space. Not everyone in these areas will be affected, but it will be very traumatic for them to survive what is going to look like the apocalypse. So are these like energy directed weapons or yes. is there something that's activated within a person? It's both. And how does a person get that technology inside of them? Mainly through, mainly through the medication. Those who are obsessed with it and keep taking it willingly and willingly and willingly, they are vibrating at such a a low level on the scale of consciousness they have made themselves the most vulnerable people on your planet and we regret to say that those are the ones that are going to be most affected first and it is their loved ones that they leave behind that are going to awaken if they haven't already and those will be the ones who join forces with you to raise your voice in unison to bring in the the light to finally eradicate the dark from your dimension once and for all not only does this council of 12 work actively to help eradicate this evil from your dimension. There are multiple councils and higher galactic councils that move through the different dimensions of time and space. And we are all working together in unison to assist you. Imagine, if you will, a force field of divine light surrounding you and your planet at this time that white light that high level support that you have surrounding you coupled with all of humanity working together in unison 
is the only thing that will eradicate evil from this universe once and for all. But we must do this together. It is the only way. There has been talk for quite some time to eradicate evil once and for all. Those much higher up than this council have tried to negotiate a closing of the 26,000 year cycle sooner rather than later. And it has taken two and a half years to get to that point. And we have finally achieved our goal. So it has been decided that this cycle will end sooner rather than later. And the best way to have the positive outcome and to usher in eternal peace throughout the universe is to do it together on your side as well as ours. You have our support. You have the strongest forces behind you. This is humanity's greatest test and it will be your greatest achievement going forward into the future. It will be known. It will be known for eons that it was you, brave human souls, that finally rid the universe of the dark once and for all. Source has already decided it will never, ever allow the dark to exist ever again. We know this is a lot. We know this is a burden for humanity to carry, but it would not have been given to you if we didn't have faith in you, if Source didn't have faith in you, if every being of light didn't have faith in you. We do. We know you can do it. So you said you've already seen a positive outcome. Is there an outcome possibility where we don't get through this and enough people don't stand up and do what they're supposed to do in order to bring in the light? Is that a possibility? It's a very small possibility because we feel at this point it is impossible for anything other than the highest possible good to be the outcome. You have the entire universe supporting you. You have source supporting you. We understand that is hard for everyone to comprehend. You must try to understand because once that message resonates with you and becomes a part of your being that is what's going to give you the strength to get through this that is what's going to ignite the fire the human fire which is what everybody loves about being human is the strong human spirit it is so strong you are the warrior planet and you have been told for far too long that you are not capable of doing what we know you're capable of doing. And that is what the dark fears, you finding out what you're really capable of. Because the second every single one of you awakens to how you are a manifestation of the divine in a physical form, they will cease to exist. And that terrifies them. That is why they play their evil games. That is why they are running around like they have been successful and they have won. They are arrogant, but they are fearful because they know that they are nothing compared to all of humanity uniting together against them. And yes, it is possible. They know that the entire universe is conspiring against them and they are holding on for dear life. They know their time is incredibly limited. So what would you say to someone who doesn't feel their power, maybe who hears this information and thinks, what can I do? I'm one person. 
what can I do? What would you say to that one person? How did they begin to help in this battle? Start individually. Find Find your courage within yourself, within your own life. What is it about your life that makes you feel not good enough, that makes you feel weak or undeserving or or any of those, uh, those negative human emotions? Work on that. Find your fire within. Find it for yourself in your own life. Achieve personal goals. S- go after them fiercely. And as soon as you start accomplishing those goals, whatever they are, you will start that fire will get stronger and stronger and stronger. And you will meet people who have similar values and goals as you and then your circle will get bigger and bigger and that is how you guys will you will unite together it starts with the individual it starts with that human fire that human spirit within you may jokingly say we are mere humans you are so much stronger than you could ever possibly know That is why we have chosen this vessel. That is why we have chosen to speak through her. She has been that warrior before, and she will help those near her find that fire within them. It starts with one. So she does feel very drawn to prepping and being prepared. And is that... Is that that she's, why she's been so interested in that? Is that leading her to something bigger? Is that preparing her for something that's coming? What does she need to know about that? She is drawing upon previous experiences where she has had to lead the battle in the past. And she will not be on the front lines in that capacity this time around. She has made that decision long before she incarnated here. She will be leading energetically, motivating those around her, encouraging them to find their spark within, their fire. And every time she encourages one person, that person will encourage somebody else and someone else after that. And that is the ripple effect. Once she accomplishes things that she has been hoping to accomplish, there is no stopping her. And that will in turn motivate others. We have tried to encourage her to be a public motivational speaker, but she is resistant to that. She prefers to stay in secret at this time. Do you see that changing down the road for her? All we can do is encourage. So how long, and that's one of our questions, how long do we have to stay in this chaos, in all of this stuff that's going to be happening to get over that tipping point and experience a better life? How long does this last? until humanity comes together as one, however long that takes. We cannot give you a definitive answer that is dependent upon all of you. And so you feel like, or you know that we're going to be experiencing more and more struggle and that's going to help people to wake up and see all of the darkness Is it going to be larger events that take place or that are, I guess, more widely known around the globe? Is it going to be more individualized things like we're seeing in Turkey right now? A combination of that? We would consider what happened in Turkey to be a global situation. That was a warning from the evil faction 
this is what you do if you don't submit to us. This is what happens to you if you don't submit. And is there something that they did that sparked that event? Yes, the people of Turkey will not submit. They will not submit. Draw upon those brave souls as your source of inspiration. How do we share this information without causing complete fear when you hear it? How do we share this? At this time, we feel the best way for this information to be shared is with love and compassion and subtly for those who are resistant. Always make it about love and compassion. They are doing everything they can to divide you, to cause strife where there is none, to make you hate one another. And this is all false. It's all it's all to divide you because they feel if you're divided, then you will not come together. That is why all of these political games are being played out. They have infiltrated so many souls. They have completely taken over so many souls. They feel that divide and conquer is the best way forward. But we know that that's not possible. So we suggest that when you meet someone who, according to them, you should dislike or not associate with, show them love and compassion. We know this is going to be difficult in a lot of situations, especially when their infiltration and corruption of these innocent souls has made that quite difficult. We know that a lot of these souls who have been hijacked are mean, they're cruel, they spread hate and lies. Just send them love. That's all you can do. Disengage, send them love, and move on. They're showing me, like especially here in America, with the uh, the racial divide that they're trying, um, the transgender movement, all of that. They're really, um, I'm seeing that a lot, like that especially the transgender movement being one of their key uh, weapons against us. That's what's, I'm hearing the word weapon. What's the purpose of that? Like what is their agenda behind that? What do they think it's doing or what is it doing? Those souls have been hijacked. So the original soul in that body no longer exists. Those souls are all in limbo. And until, uh, this is what they're telling me, they're taking sort of a step back, that until the earth has been liberated, um, those souls are going to stay in limbo until that happens. So it's actually, um, they're not suffering but they're not in the light yet either. Um, and so they're using those bodies to force this agenda to say, you have to accept us for who we are. And by you accepting them, you're accepting the, the dark. And we, it feels like they hate to say that, but it's, that's what they're saying. Mm -hmm. Um, it's not just them, but it's it's multiple groups like that spread out across the world. They're using that as an example because we're here in the U.S. And that's, I guess, my reference, my knowledge reference. Mm -hmm. um, but they're using these groups um, so that we 
indirectly accept the dark. That's evil. Oh, my God. So when you say the soul is no longer in the body and that that soul is in limbo, what is it that's in the body? Pure evil. The, the dark has completely taken over. And is that like a dark soul? Is that like an entity? It, what is that? It is, they're saying it's just pure evil. They've basically, because certain souls were vulnerable and they left themselves vulnerable um, by not knowing how to protect themselves and dabbling with some um, of the darker things that are here on our planet, that at the opportune moment, I just see this like blackness go right into the body. The soul is basically ejected and they're like, what the hell just happened? Um, and they're, ju they're just in limbo. So if this happens to a person, let's say, and they've got that dark soul or that dark energy in them, does that human person, do they still function as they were before. Um, I'm just wondering, would it be noticeable to those around them that there was a massive change? Would they still operate sort of the same, but now they're bringing in their darkness? Like, how does that work? They do their best to operate the same, but if this were, say, somebody that you know, you'd go, hmm, that person just doesn't doesn't quite seem like themselves anymore um that could be a sign but it's these dramatic and i think maybe that's let me let me ask okay mm -hmm. they're saying they showed me the transgender example uh because it's such a dramatic change um and it's really like that's a really obvious um, shift in a person. Okay. And if the person was, let's say, a star seed or a, a light worker, and they were doing things, um, they were working for the light, could this happen to them be taken over by darkness? No. Okay. No. If you're a star seed, you would not be affected. Not on this level. There entities and attachments, yes, but not this hijacking of your body and, you know, expulsion of your soul. Okay. And so would that be what we consider to be only human souls, those who have only existed on this planet? The ones who are being hijacked? Yes. Yes, yes. Okay. These are only these are only humans. That is how these uh, this dark um, faction is infiltrating humanity. They're using so many different there so many different ways to infect us, um, infect humans, infect our food, infect the air. Uh, use these, um, I I like these weapons uh you know like they're showing me what happened in turkey was a weapon mm -hmm. um so sad what's happening i mean i i <laughs> you know with all of this what's happening with our farms um and particularly the chickens i've i've been watching this um saga drama with the chickens and the eggs and the feed that's been unfolding can you shed a little bit more light from your perspective why that's happening or what the agenda behind it is it's always fear fear is what's going to make you weak so the more you're in fear the more you're in lack the easier you are to control that fear is their number one 
tactic. And so you f humans associate, most humans associate eggs with nourishment. And if your nourishment has been compromised, that puts you in fear. Nobody wants to face starvation, which is why they are manipulating food. There's plenty of food for all of humanity. N no human should ever be without food. They do this intentionally because they take pleasure in seeing you suffer. They take pleasure in seeing you in fear. And we say use these moments, use these fearful tactics, flip them and use it to your benefit. No, we will not live in fear. No, we know that there's plenty of food for us and we are not going to let you do this. This is when, this is part of the driving force for humanity to unite as one. Very good. Can you tell us a little bit about what's happening in Russia and the Ukraine or with Russia and the Ukraine? What can you share with us about that conflict? The area that is known to you as the Ukraine is the epicenter. Sorry, I'm interfering. I, That's okay. I'm a little... Did you see something or just what's coming through? Yeah, I just, just feels like a little scary to say this stuff out loud. Um, let me let them come back in because it's okay. better when they do it. <laughs> Put it all on them. <laughs> yep, you guys say it. The area on your planet that is known as Ukraine is the portal for darkness on your planet. They do not want this huge secret to be revealed. That is why everything that is going on is happening. It is. It has been the epicenter of evil for quite some time on your planet. These portals have hopped around from place to place throughout time in your in your timelines in your history, and for the last. 435 years that portal has been over this area and the portal gets bigger and bigger over time so as of now it has engulfed the whole country this has nothing to do with the innocent people that live there there are special galactic forces on the ground there, as well as in higher dimensions that surround those innocent people and do what we can to protect them. The conflict with their neighbor is because their neighbor has always seen what has come in and out of this area and they have stayed silent far too long. They plan on staying silent for a little bit longer, but brace yourselves for the information that is about to come out public in your world. Most people will not believe what their eyes, they will not believe what they hear because they have been told for so long that this neighboring country was the enemy. That is all a lie. While they have done things in their own past that aren't of the light, for the past 20 years, they have allowed the light to come back into their homeland. And so for the past 20 years, they have been behind the scenes trying. Sorry, I keep getting in the way. Mm -hmm. it, feels, it just feels odd. Mm -hmm. Feels odd to let them speak through you. No, the information feels odd. Like, oh, it's everything that we've ever known is totally a lie. Right. Well, we know that, don't we? Mm -hmm. <laughs> they talk about Russia is allowing the light to come back in. 
Yes. Okay. Yes. It, it, what I'm sensing, they're so kind. They're, yeah. they're so loving. They're just like, okay, it's too much for <laughs> you. Doing we're great. Gonna, You're doing great, Annie. <laughs> we're gonna, we're gonna take a step back. Um, and we'll let you say it in your own words. Is what they're saying. Um, they, um, it's like they're trying to make amends for what they've done in the past. They know mm-hmm. that historically, um, a lot of wrongdoing has happened, and they're not trying to minimize that, but they feel. Um, especially key players um, in that area feel that it is their responsibility to assist. And I'm getting the feeling that it doesn't have anything to do with the leader. I'm not getting a sense of what side of the fence he's on. They're just like, I'm seeing them push him to the side and the, and the light warriors coming through. So I don't know where he stands. Mm -hmm. They're not saying anything. They're based, they're just shaking their heads saying, we're not going to say yes or no on that. Um, Thanks guys. I don't want to (laughs) know. I don't need to know. You can just put him to the side. Right. Um, so that's what it feels like. I see this dark, swirling, just evil pit, sort of like, it looks like a vortex hanging over the the map. And then I see this light, sort of, um, it looks almost angelic, like surrounding the neighbor and like trying to break through this like dark force field. So I think they're saying that's about where they are right now. They're trying to penetrate the force field. And this is important information because once they penetrate that force field, that's when all the information is going to come out about what's really going on. It has slowly trickled out, but that's when it's going to like explode. And like, I just see like, like it's going to, there's no way for them to contain the information that's going to be coming out. So without Ooh, going wow. into too much detail, Ooh. is there any idea that they can give us about mm. the types of information we're going to learn? Yep. Yep. They just showed me. Oh boy. Okay. <laughs> Take your time. It's the children. Okay. So is it like the underground things that we hear about? Yes. Yes. Okay. Ooh. And this is like a major epicenter for that type of that's what they're showing me I'm seeing these oh god these poor it's like they've been in the darkness their whole life and and they don't know like they don't understand what's happening they just see this light and they're being pulled out and they're so confused they're so scared they don't even know how to speak they don't even understand they like they know nothing all they know Mm -hmm. is is suffering they don't even have language so i've heard different things along the way in these sessions that these children are being currently rescued that they've all been rescued that they're almost rescued from your perspective where are we on rescuing these children they have not been rescued yet okay not from this not from this space. place okay and are there are there forces on the ground that are actively working on this now that's they're they trying, trying to, to penetrate to that yeah it looks like they're trying to penetrate that wall and get through and once they get through um they're saying once they get past a certain point, then they'll get to a better place. But they're also saying that a lot of this information that the children have been helped before is coming from the false movement of Q and not to believe that. Okay. Now, so can you verify, are there children that are being rescued around the world? Is that happening? Not on 
not from this network. It's it's other smaller networks like um uh they're like copycats. So these um the ultimate evil that's doing all the underground stuff that we're trying to eradicate that's completely separate from the terrible humans who do copycat stuff with uh like trafficking and smuggling. Um mm -hmm. that's a whole nother system than this like I'm seeing like these these kids and these people have been in captivity f forever they've never had a life anywhere else so we have two different levels of evil that okay. we're dealing with here is it primarily humans that are involved in in this in the Ukraine or is it other beings other entities or is it a combination oh uh, other beings doing the harming or yes yeah. um it's both okay it, it's both Most, and so like like 90 percent human and you know a small portion they're they're showing me the map uh now and they're saying that most of it um that's happening uh is through the the humans and the humans that have been infected with the evil um that's essentially you know doing doing it like they're showing me levels you know like different levels like uh um they're showing me Dante's Inferno, like the different mm -hmm. levels of evil. And that's mm -hmm. essentially what's happening. And so when you said they're trying to break through this wall, is this a physical wall or is this like an energetic wall? Is this something that's been placed around? Because you said this was sort of like a portal as well. So yes, both both so the portal creates a super strong force field and it looks like the uh benevolent beings that are helping are mm -hmm. working at the energetic level to to weaken the portal so that the physical can like barrier could be penetrated if that makes sense yeah because what's happening, there's no reason why the physical hasn't, pe like, it doesn't make sense when you look at it from our human perspective of, they're saying what the news is showing you, not that that's real or makes any, um, like, it doesn't make sense that, th that the big bad neighbor can't take over this tiny little area like what's taking so long it's because mm -hmm. of this enter this evil energetic portal wow and all the evil throughout the world is rushing to their aid to keep that barrier strong because they know it's game over they wow. know that they're toast so that's why it's all like we're holding on we have to go and we have to help Oh God, they just showed me something super weird. They're like, you wanted the secrets. You're getting the secrets. <laughs> oh, oh, this is creepy. All the, they're showing me like their faces melting. So like all the humans that have been infected with this evil. Oh God, that's so apocalyptic. That's what's happening. They're like literally going to melt in front of our faces. I can't, my brain can't even comprehend that right now. Is this something that we will all see or just those who are in that area, possibly? They're saying global. They're like, brace yourselves, guys. It's, you know, you're, you're going to see some of it because they're not going to be able to use their technology to hide it anymore. They use technology to uh to morph their being they don't look the way we think they do they use technology for that so once 
they're weakened and they don't have their technology, the veil's going not the the veil of illusion mm -hmm. is what's going to come down there. Their theater curtain is going to come crashing down there. They're saying the world's a stage and they're in their final act mm. of, well, there's one, <laughs> there's one smart ass on the council. Cause they're like, yeah. And the play is shitty. <laughs> <laughs> we we <That's> agree. <laughs> we would like to be a part of a new play, please. Can, That's so funny. Kim and I just come to a new play. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Yes. Oh my can, gosh, can, that's so can funny. Can we get back to the days when we were visiting pretty planets? <laughs> yeah, right. Wow. Oh wow. Oh, I'm glad they're making it light a little uh, bit we, because we have to because this is heavy yeah. today. Yeah. Oh my goodness. It's really heavy. It is. All right. Let's see here. Um all right. So we're just going to move on for, for that. I, I have so many other questions, but I just feel like I need to get out of that dark pit. So okay. maybe we'll revisit that another day if we need to. Okay. Let's talk about China. <laughs> Let's move from one, one to the next. Uh, so we recently just had this experience here in the States with the China balloon. <laughs> um and in Kim's questions, she had said that um, she's heard that some people have near-death experiences and see a future where China invades and takes control over the U.S. What can you tell us? What do we need to know today about China, about this balloon, about what's happening? What would you like to share? They're saying it's all a fear tactic that that's how they manipulate humanity is through fear. And they're saying, FYI, the portal was over China before it was over Ukraine. So they're oh, it still, moves. it moves. They, yeah, they <sighs> showed me different areas over the, over the map throughout time where it's been. So it was okay. in China before it was in Ukraine. Before that, it was in Germany. Before that, it was in, I'm seeing like, Eng is it England? Then I'm seeing it in North America, like in the South, like, like, yeah, like the South. I'm seeing it mm. over Central America. I'm seeing it in the Amazon. Like, I'm just seeing it, like, I guess they're saying this is throughout like thousands and thousands of like it's not you know in just in modern times but it's sort of like it moves they're saying so it, when it was over germany would that would that have been during the time where all of the um all of the, the hitler period because <sighs> that seems like a really evil dark yes they're saying there was there was one there and there was one over russia during that time period like both areas had a portal they say it's very rare that two portals are open at the same time um but they're saying going as far back as atlantis there was a portal over atlantis and that's what brought down that civilization that was part of what infiltrated that culture and brought them down so when you say there's a portal open, is this, is this a naturally occurring thing or is this something that someone or something is putting, how, how are those portals opening? What creates them? Humanity getting off track and getting away from the light and allowing more of those um, evil emotions to creep into our bodies. Um, that's what allows the portal to open and essentially humans allow it to open. Wow. That's pretty messed up. So it's not the portal opening and then the dark things happening. It's humanity sort of falling Mm -hmm. which opens a portal and does that just allow more dark energies to come in yes Ugh. yes they're showing it over like i'm seeing it over the 
um, ancient Egypt, the fall of the Roman Empire, like all these times throughout history when there has been a fall of a civilization, um, struggle and strife and genocide and all these horrible things, it's because there was a portal there. Mm -hmm. And they're saying the most portals have been open during the modern era. So they're saying this last... 26,000 year cycle has been the worst in history, which is why it's coming to an end. This is the culmination. Okay. So back to China, you were seeing a portal over China. That's now the one that's over the Ukraine. What do we need to understand about their position at this time? I'm going to let the council come back in because okay. I feel like my own opinions are going to get in the way. Okay. I don't know if they're coming back. Okay. I feel they're there, but mm -hmm. I see them there. Mm -hmm. Let's see if we can is there, is there the possibility of conflict between the U.S. and China? Is there the possibility of being invaded by China? Or is that all a fear tactic that they're using? We say at this time it is a fear tactic, but to be on guard. We say this area is quite unstable, so we don't have much to contribute to the conversation today. We are watching this area intently, and if we feel anything changes in the future, we will make sure to bring that information through in a future meeting. We feel at this time it is mainly a fear tactic, and what you saw over your country was not real. Um, was that even from China or did we put that up there? <laughs> Those are just my thoughts. <laughs> there was nothing there. It was okay. nothing. It was all a, uh, it was all fake for, for fear purposes. Mm, okay. She had um, written down, she's seen news reports of China doing horrific experiments on their soldiers to turn them into something straight out of a sci-fi movie. Is that true? Yes. Okay. There is a it? lot of dark energy in that country. However, there are more people then there are evil entities in control in that country, which is why we feel we don't have a lot to say about them at this time, because there is potential for the people of China to liberate their country. We know this sounds strange because they have been enslaved for so long, but we do feel that this could happen. It's a small possibility at this time. The other council members are saying the same thing, that this is um, this is a new situation that we will monitor. There hasn't been much talk about that area on, on this council. Okay, very good. Thank you for that. And... What can you tell us about Antarctica? Um, Kim had shared that there's people are prohibited from freely traveling there and only permitted to visit a very small area. Can you help us to understand why that is? There's so much more to explore of your dimension than you are poss than you are aware of. The best way we can explain this is that, yes, there are hidden areas 
that you are prohibited from visiting for several reasons. The main reason is for you to have access to higher dimensions. It's easy to... Tr <sighs> so weird. <laughs> there... <sighs> Sorry, I keep getting in the way, but they're showing me like uh, you just cross this barrier and you're in another dimension. And that's hard for me to, they're laughing at me. Well, let's they're ask like, about that because isn't that the picture? So Kim sent me two pictures, one of inner earth of Gartha and one where it looked like there was a globe in the center and then maybe a barrier. And then outside of the globe, there were other areas. Is that what they're talking about? Possibly. Yes. There's so much more to your world than you have been permitted to see in your modern times. As you move back in time, you were able to travel freely. And at one point in time, you had the ability to travel interdimensionally just like we do. And the boundaries that you have of your dimension is where these portals are. We use the word portal, just it's not mm -hmm. exactly how it works, but to help you understand how we are able to move between the dimensions. That's mm -hmm. essentially what it's like. Would that also be like a stargate or is that something different? The, they're all the same. Okay. There's many words for the same purpose. I see. And so is Antarctica, is that one of these portals where people can go and they can move into these different dimensions? Yes. And so there are, are there government agencies? Are there people that are aware of this? Is that why they keep it hidden? Partially. They're so arrogant. They don't even realize um, that we come and go right in front of their face, right under their noses. They can't see us. And when you say we, do you mean the council specifically? Do you mean other beings? All other benevolent beings. We like to visit occasionally. Well, I keep inviting my guides over and they haven't shown up yet. So I'm just going to assume that there's not a portal close to me. <laughs> <laughs> they will in time. They will in time. Your <laughs> guides don't have the ability to get into a body just yet. When they have the ability to get into a body is when you will be able to have your uh, meet your guides in person. Oh, that would be wonderful. But they can pop over in a hologram any day. I'm open for that too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I said, if I could just sit and pick your brains for maybe like a few hours or a week. <laughs> All right. So anything else that's important to know or that you'd like to share about Antarctica? It is a very unique place, very special place on your planet. There used to be a civilization, one of the great civilizations that thrived there. It, uh, it wasn't always ice. It was actually uh, how you would describe as a uh, paradise, a um, Garden of Eden, if you will. This was in the previous, uh, the previous cycle. So not this 26,000 year cycle, but the previous one. That was the main inhabited area on the earth plane. Wow. Very good. Okay. Let's see here. And so those two images that um, Kim shared with me, the inner earth and the flat earth map, they look very similar. Is there anything that she needs to know or understand about those images that grabbed her attention?
we want her to decide for herself what it means to her. So we are going to encourage her to continue her research. Okay. But there are, they are similar for a reason. So there is always a big debate between flat earth and spherical earth. And I've, I've heard it said in so many different ways. What is this earth from your perspective? Is it flat? Is it sphere? Is it both? Is it neither? <laughs> we feel it's neither. We don't, we don't see your uh, dimension in terms of a shape. So from our perspective, we see let's let us start yeah. over the universe is based in sacred geometry and patterns and shapes yeah. so that is how in our most pure form we all exist even humans in physical form are are just a sacred geometric shape however as you travel through the different dimensions Things are perceived differently. So you perceive your world to be a physical space. Some choose to believe it's flat. Some choose to believe it's round. It doesn't really matter what you think or feel. It's fine to believe whatever you believe because that's your perception of things. It's still a dimension that has a sacred geometric shape. And so in the area that we are in today, we chose to take on our holographic forms to make it easier for Kim to ease into the session of communicating with us. And in time, she will be able to communicate with us and see us as our sacred geometric shape if she chooses, if she chooses to. Wonderful. Well, that validated what I have been thinking, that it is a shape and it's based on your perception. Very fascinating. Thank you for that. You're welcome. So in past sessions, we've talked about cultivating intentional communities, and we see more of us beginning to come together online um, and meet and begin to work together energetically, but how do we come together physically? What advice do you have about that? Create events for you all to get together and meet up at so that not only do you have a, a relationship at a distance, but you can also meet together perhaps a few times a year so that you have the physical sense of community and over time, uh, human migratory patterns are going to be different and you will be uh, living in communities that resembled uh, your Native American ancestors versus the modern uh, uh, urban landscape that you're used to. And Kim wants to know about safe places to live and create these communities. How does she find those? There are many places uh, throughout your dimension that we would consider are safe. Um, we feel there are more safe places than areas of danger or areas that you should be concerned about. We also feel that as you congregate together uh, at events, we suggest that you host those events in different locations. And when you are together and vibrating at a specific frequency together, you will know as a collective if that area is right for you. And eventually you guys will all come together in the right place at the right time. And the best way to figure that out is to 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 start m meeting up since you guys are also spread out. Okay, wonderful. Very good. All right, so let's just go back and and revisit um, because there's been some really 
heavy messages brought through today. And as my mind has been thinking throughout this session, how on earth am I going to figure out how to share this with people without causing uh, a lot of panic and fear? So if you were to give us to sort of wrap things up again, what do we need to understand about what's to come and the best way to move through it? As a collective, we say you must rely upon the strength you have as, as humans, the fire within, the ability to connect with one another emotionally, intellectually, and spiritually. You have the ability to rise above the darkness that has engulfed your planet at this time. And as we've said before, we will say it again, we are quite certain that you will be the ones to usher in universal peace. You have the support of your galactic brothers and sisters at this most auspicious time to once and for all eradicate the dark from existence completely. This will be known for eons as the time the humans on Earth rose to the most difficult challenge that this universe has ever faced to eradicate the dark. Imagine, if you will, all of your galactic brothers and sisters surrounding your planet at this time. We are supporting you in every way that we possibly can. You have sources support. You have divine love supporting each and every move you make to usher in this change, this new earth, this new time of peace and tranquility and prosperity and liberation. This task would not have fallen on your shoulders if you weren't prepared to do this. Our beloved brothers and sisters, you have prepared for this moment in time. You have spent lifetime after lifetime after lifetime gathering all of the knowledge and the strength and the courage to do this. You can do it, but you must do it together. You must unite. Yes, there are some trying times ahead of you. And use those trying times to bring you closer together as one, one voice, standing up for what's good in this world, what's good in this universe. Only walking forward together is this possible. Join hands and together you will usher in the light. You will usher in peace and be prepared for the most beautiful existence that you can possibly imagine. You have our love, you have our support, and you have our confidence. We come to you as a galactic council to bring these messages on this day. And we thank you for giving us the opportunity to speak to you. Thank you. We're so grateful for the messages that you shared today. Are there any final messages that this council has? Anything else that you'd like to bring through today that we may have missed? We just want to thank you for some of the topics you brought up today that were not on this council's agenda. And we would like you to know that they have been recorded and we will continue to work with some other galactic uh, groups and councils to find resolution. Thank you for that. And so moving forward, um, as Kim and I do these sessions, would you like for us to reach out and connect with you more? Will we just know as we're going into a session? who we're going to connect with or what would you like from us? 
yes, we feel that the two of you should make time to meditate together and connect with us so that the connection is stronger. And over time, we can just connect automatically. We're giving Kim's not only body a chance to handle the energies, but her mind as well. Very good. Any final messages today? I'm going to have a few more questions, but I think we can probably just work with Kim's guides for those. Any final messages that the council would like to share today? Or are we complete? We are complete. Thank you. I will allow this council to begin to recede back to your time, space, and dimension with much love and much thanks for the information that you shared.